Following in the footsteps of Georgia State football and men's basketball, it's on to the postseason for Jason Marshall and the Georgia State women's tennis team. They're headed to the NCAA tournament. We'll talk to Jason Marshall in studio this week on the Georgia State Sports Update. We'll also be joined by Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb. We'll get a state of the athletics program from Charlie, and we'll talk beach volleyball with Beth Van Fleet. Sunbelt Championship Sunday here at the Peachtree City Tennis Center where your men and women's tennis team just competed for a conference championship. The women, led by Sunbelt All-Conference First Team and Player of the Year Christine Reese, came in as the number two seed, earning them a day one bye. Now number two seed would usually be favored to win, but the Panther women were facing adversity that they were very unlikely to overcome. They would compete in the tournament with only four of the standard six players forcing them to forfeit points and start every round from behind before the first serve. Pressure, right? Not according to head coach Jason Marshall, who says that doesn't add pressure. It takes it off. Really, I tell the girls, look, the pressure's not on us. I mean, we're not supposed to win this match. We're not, we're not supposed to. I mean, pressure's on them because they know they're up and, and we just have a few players. So. And we just go out there and play, and we, and we just believe in ourselves, and we don't we don't focus on these distractions that we could. We could, you know, there's so many outs that you could you could um, fall and traps you could fall into that to make you not believe that you can win the match. And we just we just don't look at that. We just we just focus on ourselves and what we have to do and how we prepare, and not focus on all those external things that could get into our minds. First up, they faced seven seed Appalachian State, who entered the quarterfinal via a 4-1 win over Texas State in round one. The quarterfinals would see them defeat defending 2017 champions ULM 4-3. Adversity and obstacles proved to be no match for these ladies as senior Christine Reese clinched the match after the team won the doubles point, and Laura Walk dominated her court, winning in straight sets. So when I lost the first set, I went to the restroom right away to kind of get my head off of it and just to have a clear mindset. And I played her a few weeks ago and I won in straight sets. And I know she's a really tough player, so I knew I really have to stay calm and just give it all every point. All four of us have become like super mentally tough because I mean, going in a match 2-0 down, losing one doubles 3-0, it's, uh, it's hard. The Panthers won their first conference title since 2016 when they also bested South Alabama 4-2 and earned an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament in May. The number one seeded men's team started their play on Friday where they shut out every single one of their opponents heading into today's championship round. Now unfortunately, their win streak came to an end when they were defeated by South Alabama 4-1. <laughs> The men came into tournament play as the top seed and shut out every opponent they faced, taking down 8 seed Coastal Carolina on Friday and 6 seeded ULM in Saturday's quarterfinals. No doubt the guys entered the final on Sunday feeling confident. They were ready. I was going to have a team meeting with the coach, with the players, just to relax, speak about some, some things, some couple of things, and. Uh, prepare mentally, prepare physically, hopefully we can be ready and we are ready for a final and uh, we're just looking forward, the whole team, every single player looking forward for it. But South Alabama had an axe to grind and was looking for revenge. Georgia State had beaten them only weeks before as well as in last year's tournament. Despite losing a heartbreaker in Sunday's final, the Panther men have had a great season and hold out hope for an at-large berth to the NCAA tournament. And that's going to do it here at the Sunbelt Conference Championship, where your Georgia State women's team were just crowned Sunbelt champions. I'm J.L. Rucker for the Georgia State Sports Update. Hi again, Panther fans, and welcome into another Georgia State Sports Update. We've got Jason Marshall in studio. They had a great weekend down at Peachtree City, and I'm talking about Georgia State women's tennis. Coach, great to have you here. Congratulations, Sunbelt Conference champions. And 
Georgia State women's tennis headed to the NCAA tournament. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, it, it's just been unbelievable the last 48 hours for us. And for it to end like that for us was just kind of like a dream. We never, we never thought we had any expectations going into the tournament with, you know, coming down to four players that we had. And, and we were just trying to make it a day at a time. And to be able to just come through, pull off our first match 4-3 and then 4-3 again and then, and, then, and then win it like that going indoors, it was just, it was really just an amazing experience. So along the way, as you mentioned, 4-3, 4-3, 4-2 in the three matches, Appalachian State, the first opponent uh, in, uh, in the quarterfinal round. Yeah, uh, we played them uh, about a month ago and beat them as well, 4-3, with uh, kind of similar circumstances. And uh, yeah, we lost the doubles point, and uh, we won it 1, 3, 4, and 5. And uh, one, uh, 3, 4, and 5, we won pretty comfortably. And then their number one player, uh, I believe she was also freshman of the year. So our, our, our player of the year was playing the freshman of the year um, in, in that number one position. And, Christine Reza, our number one player, she came out ahead and, and she won 6-3 or 6-4 in a third to really clinch that match for us just to get through that match. So it was a really it was a really tough, tough battle with them. So after Appalachian State, you move on to the semifinals and it's a date with the Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe. Yeah, they 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 are a really tough team. Yeah. And they make a lot of balls. Um, they don't miss much. They they they're a very gritty team. And uh, they don't play with a lot of power, but they play with a lot of heart, a lot of passion. Um, and they're in your face. I mean, they're well coached. Terrence, he's a good coach. Um, and uh, they won it last year. So, so we knew, you know, the, the experience they had from winning it last year, we knew, like, if we can get through that one, that's probably going to be one of our toughest matches that we might have to play. And um, we... Uh, we won the doubles point. It was key for us. We knew going into that match, if we don't win the doubles point and really, really play well, it's going to be tough for us. But that was the, the biggest key was that was was that um, we won at number uh, three and number four pretty comfortably. And again, Christine, uh, she had a tough match with her girl, and then Daniela. She was down four one in the third set. Can you believe that? And mm -hmm. she came back and she won six four. I mean, we, were, you know, we're, there wasn't really much left. We thought we were going home, and but Daniela did it two years ago. I mean, she played some amazing tennis. She clinched the conference title for us two years ago, and for her to come out winning that match like that and raising her level was just amazing, and it was just a great experience. All right, so women's tennis headed to the NCAA tournament. You brought a prop with you, a book that means a lot to your program. Absolutely. This is kind of like our tennis Bible for the year. It's called Champion Minded. It's by um, Alistair McCaw, and uh, he's been a great mentor to us all year long. Um, we Every day, or I would say three or four days a week, we, we, read, we start our practice with book discussion. And we talk about everything in this book. It's about a 300-page book, and and it talks about everything from just how how to how to how to run our program, how to build our program, the right things that we do with our program, how to handle winning, how to handle losing, how to handle the good times and low times, um, and it really kind of built our how we built our foundation and built our culture all year long. Um, and it's, it's a real credit to what kept us together through these tough times is always referring back to this book and the chapters that we read and the things that we learned along this journey that really put it all together for us. All right, well, coming up, the selection show on May the 1st, you'll find out where you're going. Yeah. Doesn't um, matter, though. You're going. We're going. Um, Tuesday, 5 o'clock, we'll, we'll have a nice, uh, a nice selection show party for us. And uh, it doesn't matter where we're going. We're go we know whoever we're playing, we're going to be a four seed. We're going to play a one seed. So we know, hey, it's going to be a tough opponent. And we probably will have someone um, somewhere close to our region. Yeah. So uh, we know that's probably Georgia Tech or Georgia or Florida or South Carolina, Vanderbilt, one of those types of schools, North Carolina, in there. Um, but we're just focused on ourselves. We hope to get one of our girls back uh, that's had a high ankle sprain. So we think we'll get another player back healthy by that time that conference will be one player deeper. So, um, yeah, I mean, this week is kind of exam week. So there, so we're really giving them a lot of time off. And then next week we'll start our, we'll start our, um, training back up and we'll be ready by May 11th when we play our first round. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. And, uh, we'll be watching. Thank you. All right. I want to thank Jason Marshall, women's tennis coach here at Georgia State. They're headed to the NCAA tournament. And that's just one of many great athletic accomplishments this year.
course, Georgia State football, the bowl game, men's basketball, NCAA tournament. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights of Georgia State athletics this year. Now Turner Field and much of the property surrounding it officially belongs to Georgia State University. And the ballpark will soon become the new home of the GSU Panthers. Georgia State University just closed on the property last week. First, here's Simons driving it all the way. The layup from the right wing. Newby's gonna drive, she goes right side, good. Georgia State picks it up, and the Panthers gonna return it. Devin Gentry with plenty of room and still going. Now a foot race and Gentry's going to take it all the way to the end zone. Right side, she puts it up and it's good. Williams to Murphy for the lead. Malik, he goes in and slams it home. Tyler again, got it at the 50, the 10, the 5, touchdown! Great job on the video compilation. A lot of great accomplishments so far this year for Georgia State Athletics. Now you can add women's tennis winning the Sunbelt Conference Tournament last weekend down in Peachtree City. Of course, we talked to Jason Marshall earlier in the show. Pleased to be joined right now by Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb, a friend of the show. Charlie, great to have you here. And uh, again, the, we, we saw the video and a lot of great accomplishments this year. Going back to uh, Auto Nation Cure Bowl win, Georgia State football down in Orlando. Sunbelt Conference tournament win for men's basketball, Ron Hunter in New Orleans. Nashville NCAA tournament, Jason Marshall this past weekend, adding to the trophy count this year. Women's tennis, they played it down in Peachtree City, which was great, and uh, playing a little shorthanded, they still won it. Yeah, both our uh, tennis programs really had a, had a fantastic year, and obviously you're a tournament sport, so those last three days, and, and the men were in the finals and ran up against a tough South, South Alabama team, but. Uh, Really proud of, of their kids, how they, they really fought and, comp and competed for three days. But for them, really, they've been shorthanded most of the season. And you gotta, you got to really tip your hat to the kids and, and the effort they put into to winning a championship. But uh, it's in this world of sports that I've lived a, a great life in. I've seen a lot of cool moments. And uh, 
I add that one to that, to that list uh, Sunday afternoon. Well, certainly uh, when you use the word momentum, and as I mentioned with football and men's basketball, we just recently hired a new women's basketball coach. I'm going to ask you about him in just a second. But certainly a lot of momentum for this program moving forward with everything that we just talked about happening and, and moving forward. Yeah, we seem to build each year um, into some more positive momentum for the program, for the overall sports program. And certainly, uh, you know, this time last year, we are talking about the stadium and trying to trying to get it ready for uh, for football. And, and, I, and we've got a, a huge concert here this weekend. So, uh, you know, we really, I think, have, have answered that challenge. And, and now we, with our teams, uh, facilities are always going to be our challenge. And uh, we're really trying to push forward. Uh, fundraising is obviously a, an all-important component of what we do. And, uh, providing the very best for our kids. But, uh, you know, each and every day offers a new opportunity and new, uh, new energy and uh, new excitement. But uh, really proud of what our staff has done, really proud of what our kids have done. Let's talk a little bit about Georgia State women's basketball for a moment. Again, we met him on the spring coaches tour uh, last week down at Georgia State Stadium. And uh, Gene Hill, you bring in, he was an assistant at uh, North Carolina State the last five years. And uh, you brought him in as uh, the new women's basketball coach here. Yeah, you know, it's uh, obviously when you go through the search, it's always interesting to see how it how it takes you, and, and especially one when you're really trying to say, uh, you know, we're trying to try, trying to figure out exactly what we want to be and how we want to go about it. But uh, coach comes with a tremendous uh, number of, of recommendations from from people I trust in the, in the basketball world. Uh, spent some time at Georgia Tech prior to going to NC State, so uh, it knows Atlanta well. Has recruited Atlanta incredibly well for the last 15 years, and. Uh, Really look forward to the energy he's going to bring to our program. Excited, uh, especially after he had a chance to meet with the kids last week and uh, really get started this week and, and build a staff and, and build a program that, that we all can be proud of. Again, talking to Georgia State's Director of Athletics, Charlie Cobb, here this week on the Georgia State Sports Update. The four stops in the uh, recent Panther Athletic Club Spring Coaches Tour, and you were, I believe, at uh, all of them as well. I think the, the most common question or two Tell me about the new basketball arena, when it's going to be built, and tell me about the new baseball arena, when it's going to be built. Uh, Any last, update on those two? Uh, um, well, the Convocation Center, it's a multi-purpose uh, facility for the university. It's, not, it's well beyond just playing basketball games. And so we're in the process of, of getting the design money to get started on that project. So really look forward to, to being a part of that process. But it's a, it's an overall arching um, facility for uh, for our university and, and, and athletics certainly will get to benefit from it as well. Uh, but things like graduation concerts, student activities and things of those nature, it's really, really a big piece of it. And, and the baseball project, frankly, is just like, you know, the rest of them. We've got some ideas, we got thoughts. I thought Joe Emman answered the question real well about the Bobby Jones golf course. So we got plenty of shovels. Yep. Uh, we need people that are that are excited or interested and want to help make a difference in the live, lives of Georgia State student athletes to really step up to the plate financially. and. You know, it's not not stand on the on the wayside and let somebody else do it or expect somebody else to do it. But we've got a number of people that, that really love these programs and, and love our coaches, love our kids. Uh, it's time for them to uh, to step up and, and really help us uh, get these things completed. All right. Again, speaking of facilities, again last year when Charlie was on the show more than one occasion, we were talking about uh, moving towards the opening of Georgia State Stadium. That first season is in the books, and as we've talked about, it's. It, I think you told me last year we were what, 90 to 95 percent as we were getting ready to play that first game. But there, it, it is going to continue to evolve in phases. Oh, you have to. I mean, it's, yeah. this, as massive as that structure is, it's uh, uh, one that we're going to put a lot of attention to. Obviously, we've moved most of our offices out there. Uh, the other events that are coming, in, especially in the spring, uh, but it's the primary home with Georgia State football. And uh, we're going to really make it a showpiece, uh, one that can make this program proud, make this university proud. Uh, and then spend every day trying to figure out how do we monetize it so that we can take the revenues created to help help uh, you know, really grow our budget and uh, and grow the operation. And uh, we have we have big aspirations for this program, and uh, I think everybody understands that. Everybody wants to be a part of it, but uh, really use the the stadium as a catalyst to to really grow and. And, and finish the other facil facility projects and, and make our programs better. Well, as you mentioned, too, uh, at the top of this interview, um, there are, will be other things going on in there, and there have been, aside from Georgia State football, the Corky Kell uh, hosted their high school, some of their high school football tournament games in there last year. Coming up this weekend, though, it'll be the Foo Fighters, led by Dave Grohl in there, and that's going to be the first concert in Georgia State Stadium. Yeah, really excited to have the concert. Uh, really, really excited to showcase the stadium for probably a group of people that haven't been in the stadium uh, since Georgia State's owned the facility. And so we really, operationally, I, I tip my hat to Patrick Hatcher and our staff, uh, really have a, 
a great plan in place and, and obviously one that we, we hope that we're going to present the stadium and the university in a way that, that we want it to be presented so that, that we, uh, we open the doors for other activities and, and concerts of the nature um, to really help us, again, grow this program, grow, grow what we're trying to be. Yeah, you kind of see this too going across the country and even just here in Atlanta, SunTrust Park, the new home of the Atlanta Braves, they've already hosted two or three concerts and I know there's one or two coming up. Yeah, it, it's just in the facility business, you know, you want to you wanna make it useful when you think about it. You've got six, eight, nine football games a year, so you want to do other activities to help monetize the investment and that's what, that's what we're about. Again, lastly, foundation-wise, Ron Hunter, five 20-plus win seasons the last seven years or the seven years he's been here, and Sean Elliott off to a really good start with Georgia State football, seven-win season, the most in Panther history, and a bowl win. Yeah, you know, everybody looks at your, your football and your men's basketball coach and says, hey, this is the you know kind of the flagship of your athletic program, but we've got some other outstanding coaches. Uh, we've got some other outstanding programs, and, and certainly while they get a lot of recognition and attention, I'm really proud of, of how both teams compete and win in a championship, and anything is not easy. Uh, but, but also equally as proud of, of our other programs and coaches and, and really look forward to an exciting, exciting 2018 All right. season. And lastly, as we said throughout the uh, stops on the Panther Athletic Club Spring Coaches Tour, join the Panther Athletic Club. That's the best way to become a part of the family and support what we're doing. Yeah, at the end of the day, we're going to be as good as our fans want us to be yep. and uh, supporters want us to be. And, and that's we, we push and shove and, and we work every single day to try to make this thing really uh, benefit everyone involved. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the people who love and care about Georgia State, and especially Georgia State Athletics. We're going to be as good as they want us to be. And so our mission, our goal, our voice is really simple about uh, trying to be the very best. All right, Charlie, as always, appreciate it. Great Thank to have you on the show again. Always. Thanks, Dave. All right, I want to thank Georgia State's Director of Athletics, as always, joining us here on the Georgia State Sports Update. We're going to segue into beach volleyball. Coming up next here on the show, we're going to talk to beach volleyball head coach Beth Van Fleet. We're talking beach volleyball right now with Georgia State's head coach, Beth Van Fleet. She's a former player at Georgia State, been the head coach here now for a number of years. And uh, Beth, great to have you on the show. You guys are going to finish top 15 in the country. Yep. 24 wins on the season, mm -hmm. which uh, that's the second most in program history. Yes. Uh, let's talk about the year that uh, beach volleyball had. Very, very successful and, uh, you know, with an eye on the postseason, but, you know, we're not sure. Certainly. Thank you so much for having me back. It's always great to get to be here and talk with you. We had an incredible season. We, we had a lot of growth from the first weekend um, through to our last conference tournament over the weekend. Um, had a lot of standout play from some of our top performers and then had some people emerge into the lineup that we um, didn't see coming and really uh, played well for us this season. So when you talk about this past weekend, um, you played four matches, LSU, Florida State, Florida Atlantic, UNC Wilmington. Mm -hmm. Florida Atlantic, UNC Wilmington in the win column, yep. LSU, Florida State, not so much. Exactly. <laughs> um, very close with LSU, right. not quite as close with Florida State. Florida State's been a powerhouse this year. They're, they're really playing well right now, and I expect them to do really well in the, comp in the national championship. Um, LSU, we are 2-2 two and two with them this season. I think we've played them very well, and they've played us very well at times. We had a um, barn burner this weekend in the conference tournament and just came up a couple points short of, of finishing that series with LSU. Two of the names that uh, were named to the all-tournament team, and uh, they had a 3-1 and one record uh, in the tournament, and that's Tiffany Kramer and Brooke Weiner. Yes, they, um, all season, they played in the two for us. Well, we put them together, I would say, about a third way through. And they played in the, the second flight for us all season and really were our anchor for our team. They um, had some great wins and were very much the heart and soul of this team this year. So when, you, when, when we opened up and we said 24 wins, going to finish in the top 15, I mean, that really shows this program is headed in the right direction. I mean, you guys Absolutely. have been in really contention since the program started for the most part. Mm -hmm. You played professionally, so you know what it takes to win at this sure. level. Um, but 24 wins, where does that compare with a lot of the other teams that, for example, are in the top 15? We are very close. To, <clears throat> I, there's. It all depends on the strength of schedule and, and where schools are playing. but. Um, 24 wins is a, is a lot of wins. I think the highest is UCLA, and they just got over 30, but they are number one in the country this year. Um, so with 24 wins, that's definitely a respectable um, outcome for our season with regard to that. And we had a very tough schedule this year. So we played, I don't, we played a lot of top 10 teams. 
Um, and so I think that is, we take a lot of pride in knowing that we're competing against the best programs out there and playing well against them. And that's top 10 teams staying on the East Coast. Correct. Um, well, each year a couple of teams will come over from California, and so we had the opportunity to play Pepperdine this year. Um, we were at the same tournament as UCLA, but didn't get to play against them. So each year we get to play a couple of California schools. If they come over to the East Coast, um, we'll probably make another trip out there in the next couple of years. So looking ahead for Georgia State Beach Volleyball, you've got six players off this roster ten, with, who won mm -hmm. 10 or more matches who will return yep. to next year's team. Yep. That's a solid foundation. It's a very solid foundation. I'm, I'm very excited for the foundation that we built this year that will take us into next year. We had some excellent leadership from our graduate students and our seniors, and I think the team rallied around them. It's very sad to see them go because they gave so much every day in practice, but they created very strong habits for our younger athletes to um, mimic and, and watch and learn from and grow. So I think that I know that we are in the right place. I know we're going in the right direction. And I think these very close losses oftentimes are the fuel that you need the next season to take it to the next gear. So I'm looking forward to that. For what is still, and let's be honest, a very young program. Yes. I mean, a mm -hmm. very young program. Exactly. Let's talk about the NCAA tournament, just the breakdown, whether, sure. whether we're in it or we're not. Eight teams will advance, uh, three from the East Coast. Yes three from the West Coast, and as you were telling me, two wild card teams. Correct. Yes, and the wild cards traditionally have gone to the West Coast schools. Um, this year, it's very interesting. Um, in the past, Southern California has won the national championship three years in a row, I believe, yeah. and they are going to be a team that might get a wild card this year. So there's been a lot of changing um, in those top five, top ten teams. And it's neat to see the sport continually grow and evolve because it is so young. And it's still heavy West Coast influence? It is. It's definitely heavy West Coast influence, but the East Coast each year is getting closer and closer. And I'm very excited to see at the national championship how it all plays out this year. So going forward, you're excited about uh, next year? And uh, yes. is it beach volleyball? I'm, I'm sure like a lot of the other sports, there's really not an off season. I mean, exactly. They go right into training after <laughs> like, the last match? Yeah, take two weeks off, catch your breath, let your body heal, and then get into summer training. So, no, I think with our sport, um, recovery is so vitally important because there are no substitutions in games. So you have to be mentally and physically prepared. So we really encourage the girls to take a lot of downtime once season is over um, and then start getting in shape to come back in the fall. And lastly, we always talk about facilities. If you've not been downtown, next time you're downtown at the sports arena, come out and take a look at the facility Please. behind the arena. Our facility is absolutely one of the best <clears throat> in the country, and we have so much pride every time we get to play there. So, yeah, people walk by all the time. If anybody's ever down there, come check us out. We'd love to have you. All right, Beth, always great to have you in studio. Great Thank season. You. Thank you so much. And, it's been uh, fun. We'll look forward to having you on again when uh, beach volleyball rolls around next year. That sounds great. All right, I want to thank Beth Van Fleet. She's the head coach, Georgia State Beach Volleyball. I want to thank all of our guests on the show this week. Jason Marshall headed to the NCAA Tournament with Women's Tennis, Athletic Director Charlie Cobb, and our friend Beth Van Fleet. For the entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. Thanks for watching this week on the Georgia State Sports Update.